Imperial College of Science and Technology, situated in the heart of London, is dedicated to pursuing research into pure science and developing the technologies which will meet the needs of industry. Staff and students from all over the world are working together at Imperial College with a common aim in mind, mastering the future. I'm from Chile, and uh, I'm studying engineering rock mechanics. I was working in uh, underground mines before I came, and, uh, but lately I was working in a mining research center. I think that the course has been very good uh, uh, for, for me. For, I've been learning a lot in rock mechanics, and uh, I think it's going to be very useful for my future. The reason why I came to Imperial was because of what they had to offer me. And how, and how I would be able to use that when I get back to the Gambia. Doing the citric acid fermentation, when I go back to Gambia, I'll be able to use it for citric acid production, which they need at the moment. And it would be of quite great use. I have been working in Hong Kong for quite a number of years. And before I resumed my studies, uh, I was an engineer in the Hong Kong Mass Transit Railway. I've been working on a project which involves uh, vision uh, incorporated in the robot, robot system uh, in search for small optics for assembly uh, in industry. Yeah. Uh, after this one, I will another one project which I shall carry with British uh, Telecom to install new robots to assembly new telephone sets. For most young people in Hong Kong or in the Far East, this course will be very really useful because it provides us good chances uh, not to not just on technical side, uh, but also on management side. So Imperial College students see the value of links with industry. How do Britain's industrialists see their relationship with universities? It's no good living in an ivory tower anymore. That just doesn't produce effective results. You have to have good uh, relationships with industry. But what we're looking for is for people who will work hard, who will try hard, uh, clearly, who are intelligent and have got good use uh, of their, uh, they understand their disciplines, but also will give leadership. Uh, what this country really needs uh, is uh, that the talented people give leadership and get large groups of people working in harmony together. On two or three occasions that I can remember from personal experience, we have called on help from Imperial College in different ways. Early on, working in West Africa. We built a causeway near Lagos and then a breakwater out into the Atlantic and the Delta where the principal problems were soil mechanic, me mechanics problems of the foundation on the very soft clay and there we called on the soil mechanics people. More recently work was done on the Thames Barrier. Imperial College's civil engineers built and tested models to evaluate stress and load factors in this masterpiece of modern technology that protects London from freak storms causing surge tides up the River Thames. Close research links are maintained with many other sectors of industry. So far as Imperial College is concerned, we have over 40 research agreements, but the relationship is far closer than a purely contractual one between us. Imperial College along with our other better universities, does provide the kind of breadth of understanding of fundamentals necessary to build the kind of experience where one relates that subsequently to the, 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 the real world, be it of industry or of a government research establishment. We have quite strong links with universities which are important to us for a number of reasons. And the main one with Imperial College is that we have a Pilkin Chair of Applied Optics. But we also have other links as well. We're members of the um, Industrial Associates scheme, of course, with the optical group. And in addition, we fund a number of students down there for PhDs and so on. We like to keep, as far as we can, in contact with centres of excellence, which, which uh, Imperial College is undoubtedly one, and to make sure that we have good contacts with the people that know what's happening in the technology and are aware of the, the, the new technologies that are coming up the whole time. We are particularly encouraged by what we see in the university scene, and particularly at Imperial, that the needs of education need to be more closer into line with those of industry. 
So we are looking very positively at a range of new opportunities, new joint ventures, new relationships and so on. I have to say that Imperial is well placed with its reputation and its skills to take advantage of this growing relationship. One of our most ambitious projects is the one that we have with Imperial College, where we are using computers to see how the teaching of chemical engineering can be brought more into line with the needs of current day industry. But how does the academic world view this close relationship with industry? Among the uh, institutions, the academic institutions of the world that have a particular uh, fame, uh, distinction for applied research engineering technology and so forth, one thinks immediately of MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, as the leader in America, and of Imperial College as the leader in this country. A number of our new universities are developing uh, in this way, uh, specializing particularly uh, in technology. But, in, well, Imperial had a good start. It's the biggest. And uh, I think even its competitors would admit that it is the best. Uh, that is not to say that it's a, a, a glorified technical college. It is a full university in its own right. It does teach. Uh, uh, the humanities and other subjects as well, but it is very, very heavily uh, uh, orientated towards uh, technology. And it has some of the most excellent uh, teachers and laboratories in, in, in Britain. It encourages its staff to be consultants in industry. Nearly all of them have direct connections with industry by being consultants. It encourages them financially. It doesn't take all the money back when they do this. And um, <clears throat> I'm sure this is good for everybody. Something like half of Imperial College is devoted to applied science or engineering, perhaps a little more than half. And it's quite often difficult to decide what is applied science and what is pure science. But wherever we are concerned with applied science, we are naturally the immediate partners of industry. And uh, th that is to my mind, the only sensible way in which one can continue with applied research, because you want to see it applied. A great strength of Imperial College for students and industrialists alike is its ability to assemble teams from different disciplines to tackle particular problems. For example, when Conoco decided to develop a completely new type of offshore oil production platform for the Hutton Field in the North Sea, much of the development and testing work was carried out through the Centre for Marine Technology, jointly operated by Imperial College and University College London. The unique design of the tension leg platform called for design and testing of the structural components. Fixing the platform into the seabed required research from soil mechanics and materials scientists. Monitoring the performance of the platform in the hostile environment of the North Sea required the development and installation of special instrumentation a task carried out by the staff at Imperial. And when fabrication problems occurred on the platform hull section, Imperial civil engineers were valuable members of the team which discovered the causes, proposed the remedy, and subsequently pronounced the Hutton platform able to proceed. The platform has proved a success, and further developments continue around the world. While at Imperial, research projects examine alternative tethering methods, structures and fixings constantly seeking more efficient construction and operation. Imperial College is also involved in seeking ways of reducing hunger throughout the world, breeding new strains of plants to suit particular conditions and environments. Increased crops are also ensured through the control of pests by conventional methods. The college has extensive courses in the development and application of pesticides and through more innovative approaches. Again, Teams from several disciplines collaborate to find solutions to general and specific problems. A few years ago, the cocoa boring moth was wreaking havoc on cocoa crops in Malaysia. Biologists from Imperial College's Silwood Park experimented with a number of methods to combat the problem. Spraying with insecticides with nozzles selected to give maximum adhesion and effectiveness of the chemicals had its part to play. But in the long term, the most successful scheme involved extracting the pheromone from the antennae of female moths, the scent that attracts the males. This is then synthesized in the chemistry department, tested for purity, 
and placed in traps. The male moths flock hopefully to the traps and become stuck in them so failing to fertilize the females. No eggs are laid from which the larvae would bore into the cocoa pods. Extensive trialing in Malaysia and in England have brought about an effective means of dramatically increasing crops. But as ecological and economic considerations make the use of pesticides increasingly less attractive, Imperial has strong links with the CAB International Institute for Biological Control. In specially quarantined glasshouses and laboratories, work continues to find ways of controlling pests using their natural predators, or breeding plants resistant to destructive parasites. The International Institute is located in Silwood Park and works with Imperial College and other institutes around the world to find ways of producing better crops more safely and without recourse to the pesticides many countries can ill afford and the pollutant effects of which are often not fully appreciated. Many departments at Imperial College are engaged in a range of projects in pollution control. Again, at Silwood Park, research continues to find the causes of disease and deforestation in large parts of Germany. The effects of acid rain and ozone are being carefully monitored to ascertain their effect individually and in combination on various varieties of trees. On the South Kensington campus, several projects are involved in waste disposal and water purification. Here, an experiment assesses the value of ozone as opposed to chlorine as a disinfectant in water. Since the safety of chlorine has recently come into question, alternatives are urgently required. But the college is also concerned with low-cost systems for drinking water purification. In this Oxfam-sponsored research, the effectiveness of various fabrics in filtering particles from water is analyzed. The addition of simple fabric filters in water treatment plants, especially in developing countries, could prove economically viable since the sand beds would need to be changed less frequently. Imperial has a number of projects in the disposal of toxic waste and through its applied geochemistry work is assessing the role of geology on agricultural production. Further studies examine the effects of metals and trace elements in plant, animal and human health. But whatever research is undertaken, it increasingly, almost inevitably, involves computers. Imperial College is at the forefront of developments in computing and information technology. As the international quest for the fifth generation intelligent computer came to rely on a base in logic programming, Imperial College became the focus for much of the British government's own ALVI program, a series of over a hundred research projects into information technology jointly funded with industry. Forty of these projects are based at Imperial. Professor Bruce Sayers explains. The logic programming was to be based on a language called Prologue, which started life in, in France, in fact in Marseille, but it was primarily developed between uh, Dr. Komara and then Dr. Kowalski, who ultimately came here and for many years has been the leading light in the logic programming work. Uh, so since the uh, the Japanese fifth generation project was in fact uh, based on the use of Prologue, it was not surprising that suddenly attention focused on work going on in this department. The second thread of work going on in Imperial College, which was really relevant to the fifth generation project, uh, was the work on parallel computing architectures. John Darlington has been making use of these ideas of functional programming and the implementation of parallel computing itself, uh, using the INMOS transputer as the main vehicle and producing our own specialized communication uh, chips to produce a computer which is known as ALICE. Uh, the ALICE project is in fact uh, fundamental to the LV program. There are several other areas in which Imperial College leads the field. Software engineering is much in demand for large industrial projects where reliable software is vital. So successful has Imperial been that it has set up a company to maximize dissemination and generate income from its research in that area. The same company is involved in developments at the man-machine interface too. A keyboard system has been developed which will enable Chinese characters to be typed onto a VDU from Pinyin, Romanized input, and now the text on screen can be manipulated by voice input. The keyboard is already in extensive use in China with the new China News Agency and others needing an easy-to-use input system. 
but Imperial College is equally aware of the importance of analysing the impact on businesses of information technology and has a continuing commitment to courses in the management of technology at various levels. Finally, the College is deeply involved in the development of expert systems. Expert systems are one of the really consequential developments in recent computer science. An expert system is quite simply a means for acquiring information from an expert in some particular problem, a means for organizing all the information you can extract from him, a means for interrogating the system and asking how, in the light of that information, it would solve a new problem. And finally, when necessary, you can ask the system to explain why it has made the recommendation it has and you can attach whatever weight you wish to it. Imperial College is filled with people who welcome the challenge of the future and are engaged in research in ways of ensuring maximum human benefit. But the college is involved in teaching undergraduates and postgraduates as well, teaching which takes a number of forms. Basically, we have seminars for, for lectures and we have coursework, very, very hard coursework, and we have examination, and at last we can combine those concepts and theories and we have to finish up my project. The course is a one year course and we do as much as the most American universities do in two years. Before coming here, I finished my second degree in Korea and after graduation I entered Korean Institute for Defense Analysis. Well, first of all, it was a really tough course. <laughs> I never expect something like this atmosphere before coming here and there are a lot of courses which we can choose and we should finish uh, five compulsory courses as well as 10 or 15 elective courses. My, my work is mainly involved in timber treatment. So what I do is um, I do treat some small piece of timber and um, to investigate the depth of penetration the preservatives goes into the timber and then expose them to different fungus to find out whether the preservatives are effective or not effective. But however hard the course of study, there has to be time for relaxing. Many students enjoy the opportunity of meeting British families in their homes. Others enjoy the sights of London with its history, culture and special atmosphere. And for all single students, the college can provide accommodation in well-equipped halls of residence. I came here with my family and I was very lucky. I found a place uh, that belongs to Imperial College. And uh, so we have uh, very good accommodation, I would say. There are also excellent sporting and recreational facilities. One. A student health center and a play group for young children ensure that students are able to concentrate on their studies. Imperial College has truly outstanding study facilities main libraries and specialist collections in each department, computer terminals available throughout the campus and staff of the highest caliber. I have enjoyed myself socially and educationally because the opportunity to come in here and play with the equipment like the fermenters and microscopes and things like that. And also I was given the opportunity to go into the libraries, which had more facilities than if I were back at home. So my educational scope was broader. Also, people have made me feel at home. And here at Imperial, I can always go into any department and talk with my lecturers, whether it's on academic problems or social problems. Uh, certainly, the, the work is hard at Imperial College. There's not, not too, too much uh, spare time, but uh, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, the, the fact that Imperial College is located in this particular place in South Kensington, uh, we are very near of very interesting places to visit and, and not far away from theatres and uh, concert places. So there's a lot of activities. Uh, one, of, one of my objectives to come here is to experience different culture in England. So even though I was very busy on my study, but uh, I I share my, my time uh, to go to music performance in uh, Barbican or Royal Festival Hall. And also I went to the Royal Opera House to see the ballet performance. 
so students do find some time to enjoy themselves as well. And all seem to find their courses valuable. When I came here, I, I felt you know, I chose the right college to come to, and it's the course that I like to do, and that will benefit me when I go home. I had been working for the Japanese government, Minister of International Trade and Industry, for four years, and that ministry sent me to here. So I think my study here is very useful for Ministry of International Trade and Industry. The university's role in working closely with overseas students is endorsed by Sir George Porter. It is the duty of the developed countries that those who've uh, longer experience of scientific research to help really but not so much by doing research for them, in fact certainly not by doing research for them, but by helping them to do their own thing, to set up institutes for research. But whatever the course content, the value of a degree is clear. Well, I did a, a degree in petroleum engineering, which uh, has nothing really directly to do with making motor cars. But I think the important things are the disciplines, uh, the uh, method of attack on a problem, um, and also the self-confidence to know that your approach to things does actually come up with solutions. Imperial College plays its part in helping develop those qualities, ever keen to work with inquiring minds from anywhere in the world. Collaboration in research, development and application across the entire planet is the only hope we all have of mastering the future. <laughs>